The Midland Main Line has been my local route to and from London growing up and is often seen as an underdog in UK intercity rail travel. Standards, however, have recently fallen on the route, notably with the condition of the rolling stock used, particularly in standard class, owing to their pending replacement. I'll be travelling on the East Midlands Railway workhorse, the Class 222 Meridian, in first class today on the core Midland Main Line route from Sheffield to London St Pancras International. So, with that, let's get this show on the rails and see what these trains have to offer. We begin our journey today at Sheffield Station, located right in the heart of my home city. The station recently celebrated its 150th anniversary in 2020, having been opened in 1870 as the fifth and last station to open in Sheffield City Centre, and the last one to still be open in the present day. The station eventually replaced Sheffield Victoria Station, located slightly north from here, in 1970 as the city's principal railway station. I may be a bit biased because this is my local station, but I absolutely love the architectural design. The iron and glass roof, as well as the stoneworks, really are something to be marvelled at. The station has a reasonable amount of essential and non-essential shops to prepare you for your onward journey, notably an unusually large amount of coffee shops. The one thing I don't like about the station is the statue of EMR's mascot Miles, which I personally don't see as necessary, although it did help that guy find a place to store his empty beer bottle, so I guess it does have its uses. The platforms are located just above the stairs next to the Burger King, as well as East Midlands Railway, who manage the station. Other operators here include Cross Country, for connections to the North East and South West, Northern, for local services across the North of England, and Transpennine Express, who, when they can actually be bothered to run a service, provide vital links to Manchester and Liverpool, much like EMR's regional routes that serve here do. At the end of the footbridge is access to the Sheffield Super Tram, for services around the city and its suburbs. This is why the footbridge has been particularly controversial in recent years, owing to previous operator East Midlands Trains proposing to install ticket barriers, which would have prevented non-ticket holders from accessing the tram. My train today departs from Platform 2 as the 11am departure to London St Pancras International. Platform 2 is also where the first class lounge is located, however EMR have closed these since Covid hit in 2020 and have not reopened them for some reason or another, which is rather disappointing. Our train is now arriving from London into Platform 2, which is a Class 222 Meridian diesel electric multiple unit. 27 of these trains were built by Bombardier Transportation in Belgium between 2003 and 2005 and form part of the Voyager family of trains, as also used by Cross Country and Avanti West Coast. These trains form the bulk of EMR's intercity fleet, with five and seven car consists. Our train today is a seven carriage one, containing four standard class carriages and three first class carriages, which does seem a bit overkill from my point of view. Right, as the London passengers alight, it's time for us to board. We'll be walking through Standard first to head to our first class carriage, which also provides an overview of the train from a walkthrough perspective. One standard class carriage on the Class 222s contains a buffet car. However, EMR use an at-seat trolley service, which has made this redundant. We now approach the, one of the standard class carriages on the train, which has a 2 plus 2 seating layout featuring tables and can be distinguished from first class through the red cloth maquette of previous operator East Midlands trains. Although, upon further inspection, the maquette does seem like it's seen better days. And frankly, I just think it's rather disgusting, to be honest with you. Fortunately, I will not be facing this issue today, as I'm in the nicer, and frankly much cleaner, first class section for today's trip. The layout in each first class carriage is two plus one and features a navy blue maquette. Both interiors are still the same as inherited from previous operator East Midlands Trains, who surrendered the franchise to EMR in August 2019, following a breach in pension regulations by its parent Stagecoach. Right, I think I'll base myself here for the trip, but before we head off on today's trip, let's look at our route for today. We start our journey today at Sheffield, the northern terminus of the Midland Main Line, and then make our way down towards Chesterfield, Derby, Long Eaton, East Midlands Parkway, Loughborough and Leicester 
before running non-stop to our final destination of London St Pancras. As this is the slower of two services per hour to London from Sheffield, our journey time will be around two hours and eight minutes with a scheduled arrival time into London of approximately 10 past one this afternoon. This is my first time in first class with EMR ever since COVID ended, so I'm very much looking forward to trying out their offering properly and seeing what it's like. So let's get rolling. Around 10 minutes later, we arrive into our first stop of Chesterfield, marking our entry into the East Midlands. Most services to and from Sheffield call here, however some cross-country services tend to skip it. Leaving Chesterfield, we come across the famous St Mary's and All Saints Church, notable for its crooked spire. Standing at 228 feet tall, there are many theories surrounding its design, some more far-fetched than others. For example, the twisting being a result of the skilled craftsmen having died off in the Black Plague, leaving the unskilled labourers to construct the spire. Next, let's do a know your seat. Personally, I found the seat to be rather plush and comfortable, as to be expected from a first class offering, especially when compared to standard class and those on other Voyager trains. The armrests on the seat are pretty big and rather stiff to manoeuvre, however they are comfortable nonetheless. Both sides are foldable, which isn't something seen on UK trains much these days. A seat recline is also present, which is operated by pulling and holding the lever on the side of the seat and sliding your bum forwards and backwards. This is aided by the extremely generous legroom the seat offers, which emphasises just how great these trains are to travel on normally from a comfort perspective. Standard UK 3-pin plug sockets are located at each seat, which isn't bad for a train that has an interior from the early 2010s. There are also reading lights, but these are rather difficult to reach, particularly if you're sitting down, and like me, you're only 5 foot 8. In what I believe was the first family of trains in the UK to have this, all Voyager fleets feature electronic displays, and in the event of failure, there are card holders at the top of each seat. A rather spacious coat hanger is present at the end of each window, next to each seat, and next to this is a drawdown curtain, for reducing visibility in case it gets too bright. Fortunately, the weather's perfect for us to take in the gorgeous views accompanying the Derbyshire countryside, even if it is a bit grey. Overhead luggage racks are present on the train throughout, for the storage of small items, such as coats and bags. Accompanying this is a larger luggage space, located at the end of each carriage, and I must say it is very much suited for the intercity runs the 222s operate. Our second station call is Derby. Located in the heart of the East Midlands, this city provides links to Birmingham via the cross-country route, as well as links to other places along the EMR network, such as Crewe, Nottingham and Matlock, alongside the main London route, down the Midland Main Line. Immediately after leaving Derby, we come across Etches Park Depot, which is where EMR maintains both its intercity and regional fleets. The depot is currently undergoing upgrade work for EMR's new fleet of Class 810 Auroras. Based on the AT300 model, 
A total of 33 five-car units are expected to replace the 27 Class 222s between 2023 and 2024. The depot will then be handed over from current operator Alston to the Aurora's manufacturer, Hitachi. EMR offer a complimentary food and drinks offering in first class, which was previously suspended during COVID. As my train was booked for 11am, I will be served the rest of the day offering, which is just light bites and snacks. Drinks such as orange juice and water are served free of charge. However, for drinks such as soft drinks and alcohol, there's an additional fee. The servings began immediately before arrival into Chesterfield. However, I wasn't feeling particularly hungry, so I just went for a bottle of water, a packet of crisps, and a shortbread. I was later topped up with another bottle of water, some lotus biscuits, and probably the best rocky road I've ever eaten. I was also offered some chicken and pasta, however, I did not accept it. Following a call at Long Eaton, the sight of the Ratcliffe power station in the background can only mean we're on the approach to East Midlands Parkway. East Midlands Parkway was built to provide a link from the Midland Main Line to East Midlands Airport, located near Nottingham. Sheffield trains serve the station hourly, as do Nottingham trains. Other services here are provided by local services offered by EMR's regional brand. Passengers alighting for the airport then alight to take an onward taxi or bus to reach East Midlands Airport. Right, feature-wise, there's one last thing to check out on this train, and that's the toilet. I'm going for a standard toilet, as I feel like I check out accessible toilets a lot. Right, door locked and we can begin. My initial impressions are, it's definitely cleaner than the rest of the train. You can definitely see that EMR have redone the toilets, but that does beg to question, why haven't they redone the rest of the train? The soap is relatively well filled, however the tap isn't flowing as well as you'd expect, but it does eventually get there. And as for the dryer, the dryer works relatively well and does provide warm heat at a reasonable power. So, overall, I'd say I'd give this toilet a big thumbs up. My swan EMR, you actually impressed me cleanliness-wise, like I thought that would ever be possible. Right, let's head back to our seat and continue the journey to London. On the approach to Leicester, having made a call at Loughborough, we can now be seen passing Leicester LIP, where a large amount of coaching stock and locomotives are stored, including the former Virgin Pretender Lino set. The set was reenacted on the west coast in September, albeit in a different guise, but that's a subject for another video. Leicester Station serves the city of Leicester and provides links to Birmingham, Cambridge and Stansted Airport through cross country. All Sheffield services don't make stops south of here, meaning this is our last stop before the one hour stretch, non-stop, to London St Pancras International. Oh, and as we leave Leicester, did you know that Leicester was one of the first cities, albeit a town at the time, to be served by a railway when the Leicester and Swannington Railway built its terminus station at West Bridge on the western side of Leicester in 1832? Pretty cool, right? Passing through Market Harbour, we can see progress on the electrification works as part of the efforts to extend the Midland Mainline electrification north of Kettering. I honestly wonder what's going to happen when the electrification goes live whether Class 360s will serve it, or whether they'll wait for the 810s. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. The branch to Corby can be seen to the left on the approach to Kettering. This route was previously hourly out of London and ran using the Meridian trains. However, the electrification of the branch in 2020 led to Class 360s, previously used by Greater Anglia, being introduced on the line from 2021, facilitating the withdrawal of the last of EMR's aging HST fleet which weren't compatible with disability legislation for operations required beyond 2020. Following the electrification of the Corby branch, Kettering Station now acts as an interchange between the EMR Connect and EMR Intercity sub brands, with services operating every half hour to Corby and every hour from London to Nottingham. To the left is Kettering Stabling Sidings, where the Class 360s are stabled overnight. We now pass Bedford Midland Station, the previous limit of the electrified section of the Midland Main Line and one of the northern termini of the Thameslink route. Those of you viewing this video may remember that I uploaded a video the other day here about the Class 230s and the Marston Vale Line, which can be viewed here. We speed through the station at the Meridian's maximum speed of 125 miles an hour. 
Well, at least we were. And as a result of the EMR Connect service in front of us being delayed and experiencing a fault, we are now operating close towards the speed of the 700 right next to us. So, not very ideal, and this is adding further minutes to our delay. But then I remembered I can claim delay repay from this, and then it made me feel not as bad. So, let's keep going. These issues continued as I passed through Luton, owing to the EMR Connect service in front of us, stopping at Luton and Luton Airport Parkway, before continuing on to terminate at London St Pancras. Whilst the Class 360s do have a top speed of 110 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour less than the Meridian we're on right now, to make matters worse, owing to the design of the electrification mass on this portion of the Midland Main Line, the Class 360s are limited to 100 miles an hour on this section of the route, and with no opportunity to overtake, this means that we'll be stuck behind the 360 for quite a while, but it is what it is. The approach to Luton Airport Parkway provides the opportunity to start picking up some speed once again. Luton Airport Parkway acts as an interchange from the Midland Main Line to Luton Airport, with the recently built Dart monorail aiming to reduce the current journey times between the station and the airport. Having faced repetitive delays, the monorail will open in 2023, with a price of £4.19 one way, a 158% increase compared to the existing bus shuttle service. Yikes. Progress at the site of the new Brent Cross West Station can be seen to the left. Expected to open in 2023, this will be the Midland Main Line's newest station and the newest station on the Thameslink network, designed to provide links to the Brent Cross Shopping Centre, located just adjacent to it. To the left, we can also see Cricklewood stabling sidings, where EMR and Thameslink carry out light maintenance and stabling of their fleets. It's now time for a conclusion. Overall, I have to say I was surprisingly impressed with EMR's first class offering. The staff were impeccably friendly and polite, the offerings were far better compared to other operators out there, <coughs> GWR, and the comfort and ride quality of the Meridians is fantastic. However, EMR really need to get that act together with the condition of the trains, particularly in standard class, which is what incentivized me to upgrade to first class in the first place. Moreover, there needs to be better coordination with the Connect and Intercity timetables to reduce delays. That being said, I was able to claim delay repay at 25% of the cost for a delay of 15 minutes or more. So I can't really complain on that front too much. Now, let's alight from the train and welcome to London. And that's a wrap. It really is a shame that these trains are being withdrawn from the Midland Main Line, given that they were my childhood trains. However, things need to move forward, and I'm pretty sure that these trains will be of use elsewhere for another company. Who do you think the Class 222s will end up with? Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. In the meantime, I really do hope you've enjoyed the video today, and thanks so much for coming along with me on this ride. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like as well as share it as that really does help the channel to grow. If you're new to the channel and want to see more content such as this, why not consider subscribing as well as enabling notifications as I'm now uploading new videos every Friday at 5pm. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.